Hello world, I'm Matt Lucas and this is... Ellis Barbosa. So, very excited to talk to Ellis. He's been out here at Fairtex for the last three weeks? Two and a half, maybe three. Yeah. Two and a half. And you've already had your first fight. Adam, can you, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so they offered me um, a fight very fast, which I was happy about. Fairtex fight. Um, it was a good performance. First round stoppage with a leg kick. Yeah. Um, which I'm happy, my first debut in Lumpini Stadium, second fight in Thailand, uh, so it's a good start, especially fighting out of Fairtex as well. Yeah, it was definitely a good performance. I got a chance to commentate it. You looked like a man possessed, fighting like you had rabies. Just, ah, 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 ah. Yeah. yeah, it was good. Um, so, what led you to come back to Thailand, and what was your first experience like in Thailand? Yeah, so, well, Last year I had a fight and it was not a good experience. Mm -hmm. They gave me a, a heavy opponent, yeah. um, but I took a lot from it, like I, I learned from it. Uh, and then I took a few hard fights and some, some losses, so I thought I need to come to Thailand, better myself, fight more frequently as well, because mm -hmm. in Dubai there's not many, um, many opportunities there. So I come here, fight frequently and build my experience and learn more. Yeah. I think a lot of people have had the Thailand experience of sometimes you get the salad, sometimes you get the lobster. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I've definitely had fights out here where it's, you know, oh, not so even, but you learn a lot from it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And so what, I guess, what brought you out here? You have a little bit of a unique situation. Yeah. Well, I have um, a big fight in August for the WBC European. And uh, in Dubai, there's not really much Muay Thai scene going on. So I came out here to sort of promote uh, my brand and, and the Fairtex and youth as well, and progress myself ready for that fight in uh, August. Yeah, one of the things that I think someone or a lot of people can take note of and potentially replicate or learn from is you do have a big following. Yeah. Uh, you know, Muay Thai magic is quite popular. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's what, Muay Thai Gram, Muay Thai Magic, CM Boxing. Yeah. What, are there any other really There's big ones? A few brothers popping up Muay Thai Bible, they're doing oh, good in the UK. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Muay Thai Bible does UK stuff. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so that combined with your own personal following mm. gives you a lot of opportunities, would you agree? Yeah, I've had, I've had a lot of leverage I'd say, like uh, I took, I got a fight last year in Australia for the WBC International. On paper some people would say I shouldn't even have been there, mm -hmm. but that helped me, my following helped me get there. And then after, by proving myself, I've had more opportunities come. Uh, same with Fairtex, I've been able to be sponsored for the past two, the next two months through my following, yeah. so it, it does open doors and it does help. And how do you think you grew the following both? I guess, I think there are two separate things, the personal following and then the MTM. Mm. MTM started um, in COVID, just as a, a small idea of building a passion, a page around a passion, which is obviously Muay Thai. And then more ideas came after. But at first it was just an idea. I would start to post more time, promote it, promote fighters, and it blew fast. Mm. Just from picking good content, uh, the right people to post. And then now three years later, it's like a, a strong brand. We have like merchandise. Um, I'm flying around the world to, to good places. It's been a, a good progress. Yeah, you know, as someone else who's basically a Muay Thai influencer, it pays off. Mm. It's a lot of work. And I think, you know, with the bigger pages like Muay Thai Magic or Muay Thai Grandma, a lot of it's actually more editorial moderation mm -hmm. and p being able to see like, this is good, this is something worth promoting yeah. and people will like this. Exactly. People don't see the, the skill in that actually because mm -hmm. there's people trying to build a, a page who think, we make it look easy, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. but you have to have an eye for like what's going to go viral and the, obviously the more you do it the more you learn what will go on yeah and I think there's you know for me at least sometimes there's moments where I really want something to go viral and then sometimes I don't care yeah, yeah. you know for me at least I I'm not always concerned about virility yeah, yeah. I'm more concerned about building a community yeah. um, what has been your experience with that I agree like now I have um, I'd say around 10 fighters who are like under the MTM banner, 
who I invest in and I see that as as an investment for the future so we sponsor them gear I, pro I make sure I promote their fights specifically mm -hmm. anything they have coming up um, I put more effort into them mm -hmm. and it, it's a two-way street like they're loyal to the brand I'm loyal to them and that's how it is it's, it's good and that's my passion to promote them and bring them with the platform yeah. Yeah, I've had that experience before. Muay Thai Grim uh, sponsored athletes a little before, I think, Muay, uh, Muay Thai Magic. Yes. It was a very good learning experience, but at least for me, I cut off the athletes because I felt like it wasn't a two-way street. It happens. You know, <laughs> and I was like, well, I'm putting all this effort and energy and emotion into promoting you. What are you doing for us? Yeah. You know, this yeah. is, it's a, there's some, you know, there, I always say there's two types of sponsors. These, there's the goodwill sponsors, which everyone thinks things are. It's like, hey, Ellis, here's a hundred dollars. You go do you. Yeah. You go do you. Go go go. Uh, that does happen, but most of the time it's like I give you like a hundred dollars. I want a hundred and one back. Yeah, you know, yeah. in some in some capacity yeah. usually in form of advertisement or endorsements mm -hmm. okay here's a hundred dollar shirt okay you w wear it two times and your posts are worth a hundred dollars okay I made two hundred dollars worth of advertising out there yeah, yeah, yeah. okay we could keep going you know a lot of athletes don't understand that and so they get burned and or they burn I think it's a bit of ego, like they, they expect it, like mm -hmm. we should be giving them, but like things have cost money at the end of the day, yeah. so you invest in someone, you want something back, or appreciation, like a post is, is free, it's nothing, like, Yeah. so easy, you sit at home, you make a post, say thank you for this company, sending me this, yeah. you know, but it happens. I think the random appreciation helps as well, you yeah. know, the, just like, oh hey, you know, special shout out to Ellis for helping out. That's yeah, it. Yeah, and it's, like that means more than anything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, a lot of times the sport is growing very fast, yeah. but it's not at a point where it's you know people are making killings. Mm -hmm. People can now make livings at things. Yeah. You know, I make a full time living off of the sport. You know, you will definitely have a career in the sport. Uh, but it's not like we're making shit tons of money. We're not yeah. making basketball money. We're not making football money yet. Yeah. Well, I think some people think we are. Yeah. <laughs> I wish. Like some, some athletes, I think, uh, they think we're just smashing it, but yeah, there's more to it, you know. Yeah. There's a lot of expense. I do, that said, I do think in the near future it will happen. You mm. know, the way, at least in my experience, and my own career it's like going up very fast yeah, yeah. and I'm getting more opportunities and more money so I feel like we're maybe a year or two away from like Big a, you know yeah. substantial amounts of money social media it's changed the game mm -hmm. but like people are sitting at home now watching Muay Thai but like some people they used to think it was like karate they didn't even know what it, what it is but now with one FC and the exciting fights it's getting popular yeah for sure and I guess Going back a little bit to sort of that influencer portion, how have you built your own brand and what has that been like for you? Yeah, I've, um, I've leveraged, I think, my MTM page a lot, mm -hmm. but I've had some, I've had some, uh, some good fights and some good highlight reels, you know, and I've pushed consistently the same sort of format I would do with Muay Thai Magic, posting every day consistently. Mm -hmm. I had that in my own personal Instagram as well. Like I didn't overthink it too much. Just post a photo of a past fight, post a little video of training. Doesn't have to be perfect. Mm -hmm. Consistency, and then naturally the following just came, yeah. just from communicating with the the audience and posting a lot. Do you feel like you refined your storytelling abilities, or what people would like, or your audience, or anything like that? Yeah, I just used to keep it more like fight related. Mm -hmm. um, news fight news and just an insider into the training and then i learned over time what's going to do well the shorter sharper clips mm -hmm. are always going to do better than uh some long two minute video yeah know? so yeah i again i i agree with you i think like different platforms are good for different things yeah. and then different types of content are different are good for different types of viewers i agree yeah you know so 
at least for me in building like myself, I've always been like, okay, I promote other people and I take a very long-term approach. Mm -hmm. Like I'm looking to go like deep with people and I, not to offend anyone, but I don't care if you're a casual. Yeah. Like it's just like great, I'm happy you love the sport. I'm not super interested in you. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's it's just my that's what I want for my audience. I want like super like dorks. They're like yeah, yeah. diehard nerds that are really pushing the sport and hopefully have money. For me, I like to target gym owners and, you know, promoters, you know, people that love the sport and have a stake in the game. Yeah, yeah experience as well yeah and that's gonna open doors like you're traveling the world now going to seminars going to events yeah it's good it's, it's very very lucky so I guess wrapping things up is there anything else you want to talk about just the uh, the future um, I'm looking forward to probably staying in, in Fairtex yeah long term that's the plan um, and pushing for bigger fights and keep the brain growing well, I think we will see more from Ellis and more from Muay Thai Magic and Fairtex and everyone. So thank you so much.